Okay world, so this is what's going on right now. Originally, the F-22 motor had peak and hold injectors, which required this little resistor box. Um, you guys don't know, but the injectors that I have in there at the moment came from a 2001 Honda Prelude, which are saturated or whatever they're high impedance injectors so in order for me to use them I need to bypass this little device so this connector here um, from what I understand all these wires are gonna get connected together so right now I'm gonna cut this plug off and then I'm gonna tie all the wires together and then plug it in that way if I ever need to go back to a low impedance setup I just plug this connector out. Some guys, they cut the harness and tie all the wires together, but I like to be more adaptable. So I'm going to do that for you guys right now. So to bypass the resistor box, I took the connector from the resistor box, I cut the end of it, and I spliced all the wires together. That way, I can just swap back and forth from high impedance to low impedance without messing with my wire harness so this little guy is going to get plugged into here like this so that just bypass the resistor box so if I ever want to go back to stock settings I'll unplug this plug a resistor box in and swap out the injectors that simple now I'm going to prep the motor to start it for the first time so keep your fingers crossed so right now we're in the trunk of the CB7. Um, I don't think you guys seen this before, but I actually relocated the battery in the trunk. I'm sorry, I didn't make a video on this. This was before I had the idea to make this whole YouTube channel. But um, right now I'm gonna go up and hook up the battery because I wanna crank the motor, see if it cranks. After all these years, I don't even know if the motor runs, you know, but I put the motor together, I checked it, I did the timing, I did almost everything. So for me, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. Wires hooked up, but I never grounded the negative cable. I guess I was waiting for the hydraulic crimper. So I do have that. So I'm going to go ahead and um, put the terminal on the end of this and ground this out somewhere. Uh, it's always something, man. So this is the hydraulic crimper. I got this thing on eBay for like 30 bucks because I had to crimp a terminal in the front um, to run the wire for my starter and the fuse box because I did do the relocation to the trunk and this is going to be my lug that's going to go on the end of the negative terminal so I could ground it out and these are the dies, different sizes for different size connectors. So I'm going to strip the insulation off the end of this wire and then put this connector on there okay now you see I have the insulation stripped off so I can um, go ahead and slide this right on there like that and then I'm gonna crimp it with the hydraulic crimp So this thing works just like a hydraulic jack. Um, you tighten it, then you pump it, or you loosen it to release it. So right now, make sure I got it loosened, and then uh, man, I gotta get this thing in there. Hold on a sec. All right, so it's in there. Put this in there like that, tighten it up, and from there, I'm just going to start pumping it. It's important that you use a tool like this because you don't want a loose connection.
especially when making custom terminals and stuff like that. So you just pump it. This thing is putting like 10 tons of pressure on it or like 3 tons or something like that. There's no way you could do that by hand. And then you just release it. And there you go. That is one crimped connection. As you guys can see, this thing is not going anywhere. It's crimped on there. Now I could bolt this to the part of the chassis that's a good ground. And then let's hook up the battery. see if we get lights on the ignition it's beeping shit that's the wrong key Wait, the key won't turn try the other key whoa there is power in the accord I hear the fuel pump priming you're gonna prime it a few more times and then I'm gonna leave it off I'm gonna check to see if there's any gas leaks anything like that and I do need to add a couple of more brown straps on this motor yeah we need a few more ground straps on this motor but I want to give it a crank and see what see what happens